Abram was obviously my father and he was a poster designer and graphic designer and he became an inventor in the late 1970s. He was mainly self-taught. He only went to art school for two terms and left. He hated art college. He was a man who could concentrate to the exclusion of anything else. Mum would call him for lunch or for supper and he wouldn't hear. He'd just carry on working and working. He was totally obsessed with his work. And in that sense, he was a true artist. He chewed on it all the time. He, he rarely lit it, but it was a kind of blanket to him, you know, security blanket. He would always hold on to it. He had quite a few pipes. In the 1930s, when he first started becoming a poster designer, posters were very, very important. There was no television. Occasionally there was film advertising in the cinema, but mainly it was the poster that sold products to the public. And he was very interested in ethical posters, posters for the power of good, posters that informed and communicated rather than posters that sold products. And he established himself during the war, really, as the official war poster artist. He had his axiom that was called maximum meaning, minimum means. So the message had to be effective and you had to grasp the message very quickly. He would say, I wind the spring and the public, in looking at the poster, will have the spring released in its mind. It's very sad because it's all, it's all gone. And we never appreciated it at the time, you know. It's, so now we look through all this stuff and we... He had a very good line, huh? He believed in a, a basic foundation. After he'd finished a piece of work, he would lay a grid over the top and that would expose the underlying geometry of the work. In other words, there was a kind of geometrical proof of the symmetry. When he designed a poster, he would put it on the wall and he would ask us to come in and look at the poster. If it wasn't clear to us, if we didn't understand it as children, he would destroy it and start again. In a lot of his work, he would hide the names of his loved ones. And if you look through a magnifying glass of a lot of his posters, you will find my mother's name and his children's names and his granddaughter's name. In 1975, Abram was commissioned to design a poster for the centenary of the Royal Shakespeare Company and he cut out all the plays and, and a few sonnets and fitted them together like a jigsaw puzzle to form the face of Shakespeare. This is the original submission sketch. This is the Druzo print. It's printed from Abram's copying process and he's working it up here and he's just creating the grid to, to do the paste up. It was one of the last posters he designed. He thought it would make a very good flip book for children. It's the way cinema was started, actually. It's the... And so the plays make up Shakespeare's head. Abram wasn't very fond of typography. His aim was to make something speak for itself. So it's quite interesting that in this last piece of the jigsaw in Abram's work, that it's um, the last word on Abram Games. After he'd finished the poster, he signed it. But after two weeks or a couple of weeks, when he was quite sure that this poster worked, he would put a dot at the end of his name. And on his tombstone, there's a dot. It represents the finality of the action. 